Good afternoon. Welcome to the News at Noon. I'm Shira Matsuzawa. Well, new at noon on the Capitol Watch, Governor Brad Little responded this morning for the first time since Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan's announcement that she's running for governor in next May's primary. Now, she made that announcement yesterday. If she were to win the primary and general election, she would be the first sitting lieutenant governor to unseat a sitting governor of the same party. Doug Petcash talked with Governor Little about McGeehan's candidacy for his job. He joins us now with some of that interview. Hi, Doug. Hi, Shira. First of all, it is important to point out that the governor has not yet declared a bid for re-election. When I asked him directly if he will run again a couple hours ago, he declined to say either way. Lieutenant Governor McGeehan has been highly critical of the governor's response to the coronavirus pandemic, in particular his stay-at-home order and closure of non-essential businesses. This morning, I asked him about her candidacy and criticism, their relationship, and his future. I, I started by asking what he thinks about her decision to run for governor. Well, it's a free country, and uh, Idaho always has a robust primary season, and uh, now the landscape's starting to form, but I've been focused on oh, the things that you just talked about, uh, tax cuts, investment in infrastructure, getting our kids caught back up, and our incredible prosperity that we have here in Idaho right now. Uh, Lieutenant Governor McGeehan has been highly critical of your response, the state's response to the pandemic, including the stay-at-home order and closure of non-essential businesses. How do you respond to those criticisms? Well, I, I, I think I already have, and uh, you know, where we are today compared to where we were a year ago. Obviously, there were a lot of people that uh, that had to make some sacrifices to maintain uh, the safety of the people of Idaho, particularly health compromised and older people, and those are the choices that that, gov that all fifty governors had to make. Now, you know, we've reported that the two of you rarely talk. Does, does her announcement really change the dynamic of your relationship? Well, I saw her uh, in Idaho Falls day before yesterday at a, uh, a uh, groundbreaking for an auditorium district over there. Uh, I, she called yesterday, I missed call, I texted her back. But we, you know, we see each other at, at events and, and my staff talks to her staff uh, multiple times a week uh, on updates about what's going on in Idaho. And so I guess the other question then is the two of you still have a year and a half on your current terms. Can you work together when necessary? Yes. And Governor, I do need to ask at this point, are you running for reelection? Well, uh, it, it, it's going to be a shocker uh, that I'm not going to tell you at this point in time. Uh, but you know, we're we're you know we're looking outward more than just a few months. We're looking outward uh, to continue my goal of making Idaho the best place for our uh, kids to want to stay here. And uh, I'm un un uh, daunted in trying to get that mission accomplished. The governor says he already has a campaign organization in place as a sitting governor, but he really wants to focus on the work at hand. So expect an official announcement at a later date. For this Sunday's viewpoint, I also talked with him about the state's recovery from the pandemic in terms of the health of our people and our economy, as well as the accomplishments and controversies that came out of this year's historically long legislative session, Shira. And Viewpoint airs this Sunday morning at 630 here on KTVB. Thanks, Doug.